Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is game three of four between Hikaru Nakamura and the world's top chess engine Stockfish, but with an interesting condition. Nakamura, of course, is without an engine in this one, and Stockfish is without an H pun. Um, so it's already quite interesting to try and come up with some strategy from the initial position, because I don't know if uh, this is so bad of a pawn to not have. Of course, it's going to still be an advantage to white, but already having a rook active will make a quick castling maybe not so appealing on the white side, and black, of course, will maybe not be so quick to want to castle himself, since it would take a rook off of this half-open file. Castling king side, that is. So with that said, one interesting idea on the white side may be to try and open up the position in the center, welcome central pawn exchanges, and try to maybe get it to a point where if the position does open up in the center, this king on e8 will be vulnerable and forced to one side of the board or the other. Okay, so game kicks off in this one with e4 by Nakamura. C5, I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to call this. I guess we could still say it's a Sicilian. Knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, d4. Okay, an open position. Just like a Sicilian uh, Zveshnikov we're going into without this h-pawn, of course. I had wondered about maybe this bishop g5 move at some point, since there isn't an h-pawn around to try and kick the bishop from g5. But instead we go for knight b5, d6, knight to d5. Knight takes, pawn takes. I wonder about something else even at this point. I wonder if a4 was an interesting idea. I'm trying to keep things closed. If a6, knight a4. And trying this idea. Something we would see just in a regular you know, position with still an h-pawn on the board. But... Okay, we go in this direction instead. After d6, it's knight d5. Knight takes, pawn takes. Knight e7, c4. Knight f5, bishop d3. Giving up the bishop. Queen a4 is threatening some discoveries. Discovered, well, actually it would be a double check with knight to c7. Bishop d7 is there to defend. Bishop, queen to b4. Pressure on d6. Queen to b8 does two things. Defends d6 and eventually gets in this b5 advance. This knight will be kicked in short order. So bishop e3, the knight is kicked, b5 break is in. Takes a series of exchanges, and with that, the queens are off. This is an end this is an end game, and white is up a pawn. And we'll soon be looking to create a pass pawn on the A file. So as it turns out, this king will not be vulnerable. This rook could maybe even think about one day getting active in this way, something along the fourth rank, or maybe targeting this d5 pawn, which lacks pawn support. So maybe he's, well, maybe we can file this pawn under the uh, overextended, in, in an overextended category. Um, but first, okay, king e2, king d7. Neither side really does well to castle, just moving the king up, keeping... The king centralized. B3 is setting up an A4 advance. We do have that. And after rook takes, we have rook on H to C8. Notice how black would not be so quick to take like this, because eventually what we have is the position more simplified and an ideal position for the white rook right behind this passed pawn. I believe this would be a much... Uh, much more simple position to play, of course, and keep in mind, without this h-pawn around, these pawns can eventually force through another passed pawn, another passed rook pawn. Okay, we're not quite there, because after rook takes a4, it's rook h to c8, trying to get active on maybe white second rank, or even one day playing to the fifth rank to pick up the pawn. Not quite yet, of course, because of the bishop, but nevertheless, getting the rook to a more active square... White doubles, rook on a to b8, again not so quick to do this, because he's getting ready to roll that a pawn, he'll be very fast, rook b8 instead, 
Rook c4, pair of rooks come off. And now rook to a7, king to d8, and bishop to d2, and the pawn is picked up. Was there something better at this point right here? Instead of the check, what is maybe another try? Rook a3. But notice with rook a3, this is allowing rook b5. Bishop d2, this pawn is gone. So it's not so easy. It may, it may seem like, why did, why did white give up this b pawn? But notice, well, this pawn is maybe vulnerable, the d5 pawn. You know, this is a very uh, defensive position for the rook, and this is a super active position for the rook that will get a pawn back. So it's not as easy to convert this. This is uh, just a too, too active a rook. If something else is tried, instead of rook to a3, let's say rook to b1, well, okay, it's the same story, isn't it? Rook to b5, you cannot defend both pawns. So... As it turned out in this game, there really wasn't, even though white was up the pawn, there wasn't a way, at least in Nakamura's eyes, that he was able to convert this so easily. What was tried is rook a7, and pretty much at this point, we had a back and forth, and this one ended much sooner than game two, with a draw by repetition of position. We just had that back and forth with rook a8 to a7 constantly giving checks there's not no progress that black can make and i see very little progress that white can make in this position either it's uh reading i have the evaluation up on the side here it's reading as zeros so um a drawn result feel free to share how, what you think of the result is this something that you think is good or bad um without the h pawn that's also very interesting which pawn maybe do you think is uh, the worst one to start out without, feel free to share any of your thoughts on this uh, interesting variation of chess in the, from this game 3. And also, at the end of this video, I'll provide a link to game 4, where Nakamura is yet again playing against Stockfish, only this time uh, with Stockfish playing as black without a B pun. So, uh, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bishop e7, preparing now to Fianchetto. Black now strikes right at the moment where this rook is vulnerable. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. White is there to, in time to defend the knight. 